Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and I am so, so excited to have King Buzzo back on the show. How are you doing? House arrest. <laughs> right. Yep, all of us are. Ah, uh, as good as can be expected, I guess. Um, um, I'm thinking that the way it looks now, we probably won't be playing live for probably more than a year, I would guess. Yeah. That's kind of weird. A lot of people now are turning to doing a lot of sessions online and performing, doing acoustic versions of stuff. So do you think, come the record release, which we will get into very shortly, do you think uh, that's something that you'll be interested in doing since that live aspect, which was super important to you having a world tour on the horizon, has unfortunately been taken away? Yeah, we'll figure something out. We've just been waiting for everything to calm down a bit. We've all been pretty much following the rules that they set up. Yeah. Um, I wasn't ready to just jump right back in the studio with a, be around a bunch of people, you know, uh, um, and I'm not really set up for that sort of thing at home. I don't have a home studio or I don't really particularly want a recording studio at my house. Maybe I just do very minimal amount of that kind of thing um, when I write songs. Um, now a lot of it, I just record right on my phone. So, um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I never wanted to be a recording engineer myself. Uh, um, I get audio uh, um, fatigue after I listen to the same thing over and over and over. I stop yeah. lose perspective on it, and I stop think stop knowing if it's good or not. And so I just realized a long, long thirty years ago that, that just I couldn't do it. I couldn't, you know. So I'm sitting there. Is this a good guitar sound? Is this? After a while, I don't know. And um, it's better for me to rely on other band members or uh, um, the engineer for that sort of thing because I'm not an expert with it, and I n knew I was not cut out for that. So um, I never had a desire to have that sort of thing. I would love to have a rehearsal place at my, my, at my house. That would be cool. Um, but uh, I don't have the space for that sort of thing. So uh, um, I wish. wish that'd be great. But... Uh, but as far as a recording studio, I might have a, a, some kind of like some kind of recording setup, but probably to record if we were going to rehearse there. That was it. What are some things that have been holding your interest during all of this craziness going on? I feel like outside of home, there's so much happening, and while we're inside, we kind of have to find new things to do. Since you are used to being on the road and not home all of the time, so what are some things you're doing over there to keep your your brain kind of occupied and sane? Well, the the thing uh, I'm used to the thing that's really gotten me the most is I'm used to lots of physical activity, um, uh, um, spending a lot of time out doing things uh, when I'm home, um, like uh, golfing. Super into golfing. Uh, there's nothing like you know taking a seven mile walk on a golf course that's to uh, tune you right in mentally to what uh, it's almost like a form of walking meditation, sort of. For me, okay. and uh, um, when I'm home, I need I need that kind of thing. My wife describes me as someone who has ten conversations going on in their head at all times, and it never stops. You know, so that sounds, that sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah, she puts up with a lot. Um, well, you know, with, with something like that, it's like we've been together almost twenty seven years, and so Amazing. Uh, yeah, so it's it's like when. Uh, when I found her, I was like, you know, women like this don't grow on trees. They're willing to put up with me and my eccentric nature and what I do for a living. So I better make this work because there's not going to be another one. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy. The best decision I ever made in my life. So we, she's a graphic designer, does all of our art, does a lot of album yep. art for other people. Um, while well, we've been doing this, I, I've been editing together a f book of my own photography that I do. That was good. Um, I'm working on a book of my own about uh, growing up playing music, you know? Um, I've been writing some music, but I just, you know, I got a new album coming out. Um, we did a bunch of recording, so um, I do a minimal amount of writing at the moment, uh, music-wise, but um, that will change. Um, and uh, uh, doing stuff around the house, um, doing a physical workout five days a week with a Skype trainer. That's good. You know, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Normally I would do it at a gym, but those are all closed. So, um, so that's the kind of thing I need to burn up a lot of energy. 
that hasn't happened. But one thing that's been very strange is that, uh, you know, it's me and my wife here and our two dogs and, you know, we're getting along really, really well. So it's like, oh. I love I love how that's something that's really really strange. It, it is true though. It's it's causing a lot of stress on a lot of couples and families. So to hear that, you know, at least things are positive yeah. still over there. We're a couple months into this now. That's that's yeah. an awesome thing. It's great. It's like you know we have a spend days and days and days in the same house, you know, um, and it's fine. It's just it's a, a, all good. It's just a, what was weird was a like a week and a half ago, the uh, one county, I live in LA, a, a county over from LA County, um, they opened up the golf courses there. Really? And, yeah, the golf courses are open and they're, uh, um, they, uh, it, it, they got rid of all the rakes, they got rid of all the ball, the washing machines, you know, the to wash your ball, they got rid of, you can't touch the flag, you, there's no carts, you have to walk, um, they have a thing in the cup to where the ball doesn't go all the way down in it, so you don't have to see so you know, it's social distance. Golf is social distancing anyway. You know, True. It's like you're not, you know, and you, you just stay away from the people. There's really not any way you could catch it. It's when, you know, or outside. It's yeah, it's definitely like, not a physical sport as far as being close to people. So playing tennis where you're touching the same ball, you know, it, it just, it's easy to do it. It's really super easy to do it. And so the first time I went after, you know, the better part of two months together, I was like, it was so weird to be away from Mackie, you know, I was just like, that's my wife's name, Mackie, yeah. I was like, oh my God, you know, and I felt like I had to call her right after I was done, you know. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and I was like, you're not going to believe this, but I'm actually really, it was almost like separation anxiety, you know, wow. and we never, I've toured the whole time we've been together, there's never been a single time where we were ever you know, or when we're home, she's busy doing all kinds of things. I'm busy doing all kinds of things. We're not in each other's pockets like that. So I was like, oh, man. So that, was a, that was unexpected to have to, that be the case. You know, yeah. that was kind of nice. I was like, wow, everything is fine. <laughs> you know, as far as that's concerned, if we had to spend six months in the same house, it would be, it'd be OK. The dogs love it. I bet. <laughs> the time. They love it. But, you know, this can't last forever. So, um uh, if anything, it's pushed us closer together, and you know, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, twenty-seven years is a long time to do anything. <laughs> I just you're twenty-four. We've been yeah. married three years longer, longer. than I've been alive. <laughs> married, that long. yeah. That's great. That's cool. Yeah, um, but uh, 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 I really like that aspect of it. That's been cool, and. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things that we wouldn't normally do, like uh, you know, have dinner every single night together. Usually it's like, I'm home, she's not home, she's home, I'm, you know, we just fend for ourselves, whatever. It's rare that we do. Um, uh, we always cook at home. We always love co cooking at home, but, uh, um, and have for a long time. But uh, 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 it's not, almost non-existent that we have, you know, like weeks of sit-down dinners together every single night. That's just really odd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's been cool. It's been totally cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. Little things like that. That would be uh, uh, exciting to me, you know? Like, it's you know, lovely that you've been able to embrace that stuff and the stuff that you sometimes do miss and not really notice. It's stuff to treasure when you are on the road so frequently or when she's busy yeah. doing her work. So it's good you've been able to take it in. Yeah, it's been great. So that's been cool. You know, just like a. Uh, um, you know, four o'clock rolls around. It's like, well, what do you, what do you think we should make for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we would never do that. You know, we would just never do that. She'd be, we'd be busy doing ten thousand other things or whatever. Just not think about it. As far as that's concerned, I mean, you know, with uh, um, a uh, 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 someone that you want to spend, make a commitment to like that, and and uh, a lifelong commitment if possible, for as long as possible, um, as long as you're both alive, uh, you, you really want someone who is independent, who doesn't need you. And um, so I, I'm very attracted to that aspect of that you'll be okay whether I'm here or not. And that, mm -hmm. to me, is more exciting than um, 
you absolutely need me for every single thing. I don't, I don't like that. And then what happens is you're both independent and then you come together and make something bigger. And as a mutual respect there, that's not there if one person is more dependent on the other person. At least it's been my experience. And so when we're, when we're normally out, then the fact that she's got a million things going on is really, that to me is really great. I think it's really cool. I'm all about it. Yes, do that. That sounds really great. Do as much as you can to enrich your life in whatever way possible. Uh, I think that would be really great and very attractive and you know something to strive for. And then we're in a situation where that's not happening to find out that even the smaller things are really important too. Well, even better. I love this. Who knew King Buzzo was such a romantic? <laughs> it's all coming out. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I did all my touring and stuff like that. I always had girlfriend, a girlfriend. I never did. It was, it was the normal rock and roll stuff was never my, I never, never had any interest in it. Yeah. Like, you know, I uh, uh, just, it wasn't me. So um, uh, um, that hasn't changed. I mean, I had long-term relationships before that before I got married, so, um, which was really weird. I was in a seven-year relationship before I met my wife, and when I got out of that relationship, I was like, I'm just going to be single for a while. This will be great, and I was not married nine months that later. That didn't last long, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> the weirdest thing. I never would have guessed. Wow. You know? That's not the kind of thing you can plan. You know? Your plans right up to the moment that something happens, and then it all changes, you know? And I think you just have to be smart enough to to not let, regardless of what you might think you want, don't let Mr. or Mrs. Wright walk past you, you know? And people do it all, all the time. Yeah. They, for whatever reason, they have these walls built up in their head, and um, Mr. Wright or Miss, Mrs. Wright or Miss Wright walks past them, and they don't notice it. That's terrible, you know? <laughs> I feel so like uplifted and inspired right now. This is lovely. <laughs> when you're but, on, look, look, think about what's important and not absolutely. what you might think is important. There might be a lot more to this. And then when you see it, don't let it go. You know, you want something that's going to, you want a partnership. It's a partnership, like a life love partnership for a long time. You're both weirdos. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't have married some square, you know, that's not going to happen. So, Eccentric weirdos. I mean, it's like her her dad would say, you know, um, and they love me to death. And they're just like, we just didn't think any she would ever get married because it was she's too eccentric. You know, <laughs> it's <just> like, you know, <laughs> well, that's since... me. me too. You know, no, that's lovely. My that's... parents said anything would happen. Nothing. They never had any interest or any idea that anything I would ever do would be successful. You know, so when it all works out in a way that's that's uh, really normal, you know, um, you know, owning a house, having a mar long term marriage for decades. It's like that's all normal stuff. No divorces. Neither one of us have ever been married before. You know, like, just it's the weirdest thing. Super conservative lifestyle, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's awesome, though. I mean, since we're speaking of partnerships, one thing that I do want to segue into is uh, the new partnership with Trevor Dunn that you have on the brand new upcoming record release, Gift of Sacrifice. Um, this album, you have so far released one single. I listened to it. I absolutely love it. And uh, this is your second solo acoustic record. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, when it comes to the solo stuff, what was the reasoning that you decided to go towards something acoustic rather than the super intense and loud and almost angsty music that you were known for? Well, I do that all the time. Mm, so I figured if I wanted to do something on my own, why would I do something that's pretty much like what the Melvins does? The interesting thing to me, though, is that uh, people will say, well, your solo stuff sounds too much like the Melvins. Well, it's like, I write the Melvin stuff. It's you. <laughs> what, it, what would it sound like? And, and what tends to happen, which I didn't want to do on my first one especially, was um, punk rockers or metal people that pick up acoustic guitars always end up sounding like fucking James Taylor, which I did not want to do. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. You're you're right. <laughs> I don't hear that fucking shit. And and you know, you want to sound like that? He's gonna do it better than you anyway. If that's a, if that's a road you want to go down, really? You know, it's like it's just dumb. Be like me trying to play classical guitar, you know. It's a dumb idea. 
Like, no, I want to do something that's different. Um, it's not normal fare. But the thing with Trevor, though, is it's, it's certainly not my first partnership with him. We've done lots. I've worked with Trevor a lot. Um, starting with Thanamos more than 20 years ago. And uh, he was on our uh, Melvin's um, Freak Puke record. He played stand-up bass. I mean, we played electric. I played electric guitar. Dale played drums. We did a bunch of touring with him like that. Um, uh, and a lot of other things. We've done. We've toured live with him. He's played in the Melvins uh, in various incarnations of things that we've done. And um, so uh, it wasn't a new, new thing mm -hmm. at all. I knew that Trevor was a fantastic musician and uh, would be able to handle this. And originally, it wasn't. I didn't have the plan for him to play on the whole record. I didn't have a plan for him to play on the record at all. I had a, most of it recorded, almost the whole thing recorded. Um, this is more than a year ago. Uh, and I had, because we planned things out way, in, way, way, way in advance. Like I was talking about this tour, um, like uh, uh, Mar or February, March of 2019, you know, like um, exactly when it was going to be. We have it all planned out, uh, always. Um, and, uh, um, and so I was like, you know, it would be really cool then more than a year ago, I was thinking it'd be really cool to do this tour with Trevor and have him play stand at bass as an opening band. And then maybe we can play some songs together and then I'll do my thing. And that would be really cool. So maybe I, you should, you know, you come out and record some songs and we maybe can put out a little tour EP that we could sell on the tour. And so he came out to LA for a few days and I go, we'll play on one of the songs I already have. And then we can put on the EP. It'll be different than what's actually on their album. Yeah. You know? And then once he put the, the bass down, I was like, oh, my God, it sounds so great. Um, because I knew from the beginning I wanted to do um, acoustic guitar and modular scent. This is on there and vocals. That was the original plan for the record. That's all it was going to be. And um, there's one song, Burn Animal, on the record that has just it's just me. And that pretty much sounds like how the album would have sounded if he wasn't on it. So um, the songs were already constructed as far as like what most of them, uh, what they were going to be without bass. And then when he added bass to it. I was like, well, try doing it on another one and then try doing it on another one. <laughs> the next I, thing you know, it's the entire record. Almost whole record. Yeah. And then um, I made room for some of his, um, his uh, instr instrumental stuff he had and did a bunch of things to those after the fact and moved some of those songs we're going to be on the album to the EP and I just readjusted my thinking about the whole thing, which is, um, um, once again, it's like one of those things like, you know, not missing miss, miss right walking by. It's like, don't think, you know, everything, you know, um, if something is really good, change your plans, be flexible to where that, that will work. Um, had I not been, I wouldn't, wouldn't have an album like this. You know, accidentalist, be an accidentalist. If something falls in your lap, pick it up. You know, it's like, it's like come on, don't, don't, don't um, mess, mess up uh, these gifts from wherever they come from. Uh, uh, don't uh, uh, miss out on some, some amazing thing because your ego gets in the way. Because you have these plans and these ideas of how everything should be. Well, maybe, but maybe something could be better. And with guys like him, you have people like the guys I play with, Dale and Steven, and most of the other people that we played with, you know, I think that they're fabulous musicians. And so I want them to do what they're going to do. I want them to make this stuff better. And so I'll write a song with this idea that when I bring it in and these guys put their magic to it, that song is going to be better than I could have imagined. And that is, I think, is a mistake lots of bands make. You know, people have some distinct idea about what they're doing. I'm not a drummer. I'm not the kind of bass player that Steven is. I'd rather have them do their thing on it. And yeah. a lot of the time, ego gets in the way as well. I've noticed that with a lot of bands, even even interviewing bands, and they're like, no, we needed it this way. And unfortunately, we got into a fight over it. And, you know, you hear all the studio stories and stuff. So the fact that you're able to put your ego aside also and be like, hey, I know what they're good at. They're going to improve it. And it's, you know, that's what makes our band us, you yeah. know? Yeah, you let these people. I'm already a fan of what they do, and as a songwriter, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more excited about having those two guys play on songs. And you know, you write a song, and you tell Trevor Dunn, like uh, I have this acoustic song, I want you to play acoustic stand-up bass on it, 
And what I want you to do, and the only instruction I gave him is I was, I want you to overplay on everything. I want you to play more than you think you should on every single thing, knowing that if I gave him that much freedom, he wouldn't overplay, but he would play more than he wouldn't he'd be inclined to do what he thought was right. Yeah. As opposed to, is this okay? Is that okay? No, no, no. Overplay, overplay. Okay, okay. And then he, and you know, he'll dumb it down to what it's overplaying for him as far as he thinks, but it's not really overplaying. You know, if I told him, well, we'll see. I don't want to do any of that. Don't mess that up. Just let him do it, and then take it from there. And you'll be, you'll get a lot better product. You know, no, I, I love, I love the sound that he was adding to it with the stand-up bass. I mean, with science and modern America, the oh, yeah. tone of it. It's so warm, but at the same time, when you mix all of the, even the synth together in your vocals, yeah. it's almost, it's almost eerie in like the best way possible. Was that a sound you originally were going for or a vibe or did that kind of just happen naturally? And you're like, okay, this is totally what we're going to go with. Well, I know I wanted to write longer songs for this one. Um, the first album I did had a lot shorter songs, more like about two minute songs. And I wanted to do, you know, um, some four to seven minute songs a couple of those are six and a half minutes and then we just put out a new single um i'm glad i could help out um uh that's a little shorter we even actually made a video for it too it's kind of cool let's check it out my buddy in atlanta made it um but that one's a little shorter um but uh um, maybe three minutes uh but uh um i wanted to not have i had faster songs in the first record i wanted to slow it down have it be longer, stretch the stuff out, um, be a little more um, um, maybe dramatic, maybe, tiny bit more. Yeah. Even though fast songs are really good. One of my favorite songs is uh, this song uh, by Bob Dylan called uh, um, It's All Right, Mom, Only Bleeding. If you haven't heard that, check it out. It's a really great song. I would highly recommend it. And that's more like what I was trying to write on my first record. Sort of. Sort of. I mean, that, you know, it's not a direct ripoff, but that's more what I was thinking. The new album would be more like a heavy metal Tom Waits kind of on acoustic. With totally. Crossed with, yeah. Crossed with uh, Captain Beefheart on acoustic. Okay. But if you played heavy metal Tom Waits, that's, that, that's kind of, that's been, you know, a big desire for us for a long time, that kind of thing trying to find influences for heavy metal stuff that wouldn't be necessarily thought of as being an influence for a heavy metal band. We've always thought we were Captain Beefheart playing heavy metal, you know, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, no, that's why, that's why I kind of laugh a little bit. I'm like, that's a really good comparison. <laughs> yep. A lot, of, a lot of people pick up on that. Um, uh, until I point it out and then like, like, like that. Oh yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. That's what we're doing. It's like, yeah. anyway. I, I love how it's just adding things on top of it <laughs> yeah. but yes. it, it works it works I, I love the sound you're able to achieve on this album and I'm just I'm Thank so you. excited to hear you're welcome I'm so excited to hear all of it and right there we were just talking about uh, other musicians and how things kind of come to fruition and uh, one thing I did want to ask you about I know that the tour unfortunately is going to be postponed and it, it's it really is a bummer. Of course, it's not the biggest of everything going on right now, but it, it, it sucks. And so I wanted to ask you, just speaking to live shows, I was wondering if you could tell us about your first live show as far as the one that you performed. Uh, did it go as well as you had hoped? Uh, did it not go so hot? Just tell me a little bit about it. Well, um, the, first, the very first show we ever did as a band, what I would consider the first show, was in Olympia, Washington. And it would have been in 1984. <laughs> oh, there's a dog. I was waiting for it. <laughs> 1984. And um, um, I thought it went, went well. We played with a couple of Canadian <laughs> bands. Come on. Come on, come on. And um, then uh, we had a show at the same place, this club called the Tropicana. Like a few weeks later, two weeks later or something, you're going to play again. And so... When we played, um, that audience that had been there the show before was still there wanting to see us play. So then I was oh, like, okay, we can do this. That's a good sign. Yeah, you know, we can do this. Didn't have that much luck later, but we always did good in Olympia and Seattle. Well, mostly good. Um, but Olympia was like, well, that's where we started. 
And um, those people always embraced us, always, from almost day one. And so I knew if I could get those those, those kids interested in the weird, wacky stuff that we're doing, it wouldn't, it's not impossible. But then, you know, about 84, into 84, we got a different drummer, and I changed my ideas about all of it and what I wanted to do. And then we concentrated on something that would be a change for us musically that ended up being an influence on a type of music that changed the entire scope of music on a global level, which was, you know, not something I could have ever thought would happen. But what it did tell me was that my instincts were correct in Absolutely. what I thought would be good, you know? So that's, you know, for what that's worth, it's been kind of, it's kind of nice to know that I wasn't wrong about that. You know, it's like this, and all I did was say, I, this is what I want to hear. This is how I want to hear this played. And then as it turned out, you know, was it, that seed grew into stuff that went onto every area of the entire planet, you know, so that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's super cool. cool. And also going forward, when you have ideas that are out of the box or people would look at as abnormal, you can also think to yourself, hey, it, I had this idea once that was a little bit out there and it seemed to work. So it helps you not question yourself going forward as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and then it was, it wasn't an easy road at the beginning. I mean, we had lots of, lots and lots of tours and things like that into the nineties where we did not have, we're not universally accepted by people, but we're still not. I mean, we're, you know, we're an underground band. We're not, we haven't had any massive success along those lines, but, uh, um, sales wise, but we do fine. And, uh, um, um, I'm very fortunate in that I'm able to make a living doing what I want to musically. Um, but like you said, the one thing I haven't changed is that attitude of I'm going to make music that I like, that I would like as a fan. And I'm going to behave in a way that as a band that I would be, I would appreciate if I was a music fan. Um, and I don't know what people are going to like. I have no idea what people are going to like, but I'm going to make music that I like. And I figure that I have good taste. And if I make music that has, that I, that I think is good, there will be other people that will think it's good. I don't know how many, but it will be enough. That's and it. it has been right. <laughs> That's been totally fine. You know, just thinking along those lines, I think, um, uh, trying to second guess what people are going to like or dictating your life around those sorts of things. I think it's, you know, that's just a, it's a sad place to be. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, maybe it'll work. I don't know. I yeah. just don't have any idea about that. I just never behaved that way. Never for better or worse. I just figured, you know, I don't know. I'm going to do what I think is good, whether people like it or not, or is just, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just that's, stuck to it. It's, it clearly paid off sticking to your guns now, however many records later to solo albums it's it's definitely paid off yeah it's been fine you know we have a career in music that we can uh, and we'll weather this one way or another i don't know what the future holds i have no idea but um um we were going to play in toronto our show is with red cross the, the, my solo show with the guys that i the guys that i play with <laughs> yeah. Well, I really do want to say thank you so, so much for coming on here, for giving me your time. Um, it, it's been years since I first had you on. And when I did first interview you three, I was pretty much just kind of really getting into interviewing. So it's really amazing to circle back and do this yep. again. So thank you. Thank you for the interest. Absolutely. Thank you again to King Buzza for hopping on here. Once again, I am the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.